As we come off the bus, you'll notice that the vehicle assembly building is behind me. And that's because right across the street here is the parking lot for the crawler. This is the machine that carries spacecraft, including Artemis, out to the launch pad when they are ready to go from the vehicle assembly building out to the launch pad and prepare for launch. Well, anyway, this crawler, this is crawler two. There's two crawlers. Uh, there's one on the other side, which was obviously crawler one. And they were built for the Apollo program. And this one was the second one built. It was built in 1966. Uh, the company who built it was a mining company, Marion Power and Show. And uh, <clears throat> they actually pretty much assembled it in Ohio and then brought it down here and then reconstructed it. Um, it's 130 by 115. It weighs 6.6 uh, .6 million pounds. Really, we don't travel any more than a mile an hour. How much fuel? It can, uh, it can hold 5,000 gallons. There's two 2,500 gallon tanks, one on each end. How long have you been driving this? I hate saying this. Uh, about 40 years. Wow. wow. How, many, how many missions have you supported then? About every shuttle mission. So. The drive obviously takes a while. How long is a driving shift per driver, and what do you do to keep focused during that? To run the crawler, say like on a rollout operation, uh, it takes about 18 to 20 people. Okay, and that's including technicians on the ground, and in the pump room, and in the engine room. And we all usually take about two to three hour shifts and rotate. It's not like a car, you can't take it out every day. So the only time you get a chance to actually uh, train somebody is during an operation. Oh, there's no like a Right, there's no, you know, in other words, yeah, there's no simulator or anything like that. It's the real deal. And NASA really doesn't look too much, like you said, anymore to low Earth orbit. They're trying to move, of course, to the moon and beyond. So they're trying to carry the heavier rocket with the heavier, you know, uh, payloads. Artemis is much heavier than the shuttle was. Um, in shuttle, we were carrying about uh, 12 million and uh, right now we're carrying about 16. So it's upgraded. We had to upgrade all the, uh, the mechanics on the bottom. We did all, redid all the rollers that the shoes run on so it could carry a heavier load. We strengthened all the trucks. We added steel inside of each of the trucks so it could handle a, a heavier load. Um, all the gel cylinders, that's the jacking cylinders that raise the chassis up and down. We changed all those out so they can handle the heavier load. We added new engines up top in the engine room so they could uh, actually produce more power because the mobile launcher compared to the uh, mobile launch platform required a lot more power because we're carrying a tower and the tower needed more power. And we needed a more of a purge on the vehicle. So it had to, uh, we had to have a lot more power. If you had to try and build one of these, I'd hate to think how long it would take you to do it. Uh, when, this, uh, when the crawler was originally uh, built in the 60s, um, they ran about $10 million, $10 million apiece in the 60s. So you think about that now, if you go to today's dollars, yeah, we're looking hundreds of millions. Out of all of the things I imagine we could be doing today, going inside the crawler, I, don't, I didn't even know that was within the realm of expectations. I guess you don't need a brake pedal, do you? Um, that is a brake pedal. <laughs> That's exactly right. Now yeah, we're learning. If you will reach right down there and lift that little lid and flip that switch. This? Yep. It's all connected to uh, the PLC, Programmable Logic Control. So everything's computer driven. Was it always computer driven even back in the 60s? Or? Nope. It was all relays. Wow. Back in the 60s, there was a lot of uh, mechanical. The, the cab has changed quite a bit from Apollo to now. On Apollo, there were actually two consoles, and <clears throat> you actually uh, steered it like uh, they used a jet fighter controller. Left to right, you can see the first is forward, neutral, reverse. It's like your transmission. You're talking about a gas pedal, it's called your speed control, the big knob right there. And then you have different steering modes, great circle, crab, independent. The other cab, which is diagonally opposite of here, so it steers the other two trucks. And then, of course, it's the beautiful little steering wheel that everybody loves. It's small, but it's effective. And you can see it's plus or minus six degrees. Six degrees obviously doesn't sound like a lot, but over, <clears throat> over the entire length of the transporter, a six degree turn equals to a 500 foot radius. And that's, that's the tightest the crawler can turn, 500 feet. That's the sharpest turn it can make. As far as moving 
Uh, vehicles, uh, we have a wind restriction, of course. You can't move uh, in more than about, I think it's 40 knot winds. Um, and there's, not that there's a restriction, but the crawler will still move when there's lightning out there. But obviously you can't have anybody on the ground. They have to be in their vehicles. And uh, really when we're moving, a, 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 well now it's an Artemis to the pad, uh, we try to make sure that, that uh, there's no lightning within 25 miles. Right now we're on the crawler, which has moved shuttles and now Artemis retrofitted to move not only the vehicle, but also the launcher, that, that tower that's conveniently stored right in the background of my shot right now to the launch pad. This is a very historic piece of equipment, which I did not expect to get the opportunity to walk on today. The one, of course, that shot off Artemis 1, and there are four interface points that match up the four interface points here on top of the crawler. And we jack the mobile launcher up about three feet, take it to whatever destination needs to go, typically pad B or the VAB. Everybody likes to equate it. It's 90 foot square. It's like a baseball diamond. Hmm. Same, same as a baseball diamond, to give you an idea of size. I mean, I'm yet again speechless. And I know I sound like a broken record, but NASA is just one time capsule after another that is moving into the future with more and more innovations built upon legacy. It's incredible.